In this example, we want to consider how to construct the in-center of a triangle. The in-center is the center of a circle, which can be drawn tangentially to the three sides of this triangle. What we do is we bisect two of the angles. So we could bisect this angle here, for example. Now, one way to do that is to mark off equal lengths from this point here. So you, you could use a compass, put the compass point here, set the compass to this distance, mark it off, and mark off the same distance here on this side. It doesn't matter what the setting is. Then what you could do is take the compass, put the compass point here, set the compass to some other distance, and scribe an arc. Well, it would probably look more like this. And then with the compass set to the same extension, put the point here and scribe another arc. And where the two arcs cross, join that point to the corner and you will have bisected this angle. You could bisect another angle and draw in the bisector and note where the bisectors meet. This point is actually the center of an incircle. The three bisectors of the three angles are actually concurrent. So if I was to bisect this angle up here, so that this angle equals this angle here, I'd find that this bisector also meets at these. So the three of them are concurrent. The three bisectors meet at a single point. Now it's a fact that this point is the center of a circle which can be drawn tangentially to the three sides. That means that this distance here, the perpendicular distance of the point to this line, or the shortest distance of this point to this line, equals the perpendicular distance here, which in turn is equal to this perpendicular distance. Because of that, we can, that's the reason why we can draw a circle. So this is the radius of the circle. Now the thing is, why is this point the in-center of the triangle? The in-center means the center of the in-circle. Well, if you take any line that bisects an angle and pick a point on it, you can prove that the perpendicular distance of this point to either arm of the angle is the same. So you can prove that this equals this. Now the way you prove that is by looking at the two triangles formed. You see that these angles are the same in these two right angle triangles. The right angles are obviously the same. So we draw a line from this point perpendicular to this arm and a line from this point perpendicular to this arm. So we have two right angle triangles. Two of the angles are the same. The x's are the same. Right angles are the same. That means that the third angle is the same. I could mark the third angle in if I wanted to, but I won't bother. So we have two angles the same, but we also have a side that's the same. This side is the same in both triangles. Um, as a matter of fact, we have an angle-side-angle angle situation. So I could actually include this angle here. So we have angle, this angle, this dotted angle, this side here, and this angle here. And in the other triangle, we find that that angle-side-angle angle is equal to this angle, this side, and this angle here. So we have an angle-side-angle angle situation. So we have two angles and a side the same in both triangles. That means the triangles are congruent. So if the triangles are congruent, it means that corresponding sides are the same. So that means the side opposite x, is this purple side, equals the side opposite x here. So we, we've now proven that, that those two perpendicular distances are the same, that this side equals this. So that's true for any point on the bisector of an angle. If we draw perpendicularly, we get two congruent triangles. So these two distances must be the same. So if we pick where two bisectors meet, then this point is on this bisector here. So that proves that this perpendicular distance must equal this perpendicular distance. But this point is also on this bisector which proves the perpendicular distance of this point to this arm of the angle must equal the perpendicular distance of this point to this side here. So we've proven that the, this one equals this one, 
and that this one equals this one. So the three of them are the same. So that means we can draw a circle with the sides of the triangle being tangents to the circle because it's a fact that that if we draw a line at right angles to the radius, the circle will just touch it at that point. It's a fact that the radius is perpendicular to the tangent at the, these points here. So we can draw a circle that fits exactly inside this triangle, touches at these three points. Let's get the area of this triangle. So we have three sides and no angles. So we can't use the rule of half AB sine C. Where A and B are two sides and C is the capital C is the angle in between the two sides. We can't use that because we don't have any angle. So we would have to get an angle to do that. Um, let's suppose that we want to get this angle here. I'm going to call this angle capital A. You could call it capital C, but I prefer to call it capital A. Usually we call a missing angle capital A. If this is capital A, that means the side that's opposite capital A is small a, which means that the other two sides are small b and small c. So the small letters are the sides. Now, we can't use the sine rule. We can't say 10 over sine A equals 12 over sine capital B. We don't have B. We can't get it. And likewise, we can't say 10 over sine A equals 8 over sine C because we don't have this angle down here either. So we have to use the cosine rule. So you can see that small side A is opposite capital A. So the side is this here is opposite this angle. So we have 10 squared equals B and C. It doesn't matter which of these we call B and which we call C. B is 12. Okay, and we just rearrange this to find cos A. So we just plug in a numerator here. 10 squared minus 12 squared minus 8 squared. It's minus 108. And we divide that by the denominator. So I'll use a bracket here. And we have minus 2 multiplied by 12 multiply by 8. So we get 0.625. So cos of A is 0.5625, which means that A is 55.75 degrees. So the area of the triangle is a half AB sine C. So it's a half times 8 times 12. By the way, I should maybe change this now to A, this to B, and then this would be capital C. But it's easy to remember this formula, half the product of two sides times the sine of the angle in between the sides. Because if little a and little b are the two sides, then the angle in between has to be capital C, because capital C is opposite little c. But anyway, just remember in words, half the product of two sides times the sine of the angle in between. So the angle is 55.75 degrees. So the area of the triangle is 39.68. Now suppose we want to get the radius of the incircle, this distance here. Now there's two ways we can do that. One way you could imagine doing it is to look at this triangle here and this triangle here. Now we're looking for R which is the side opposite this angle here. This angle in here, 27.9, is half of 55.75 degrees. These two right angle triangles have a common side. This side is R. This is what we're looking for. 
total side here is 12. Let's call this distance from here to here x. Now the reason we're doing that is because we can write this, this, this side of this other triangle in terms of x. If this distance here is x, then the dis distance from here to here must be the total distance, which is 12, minus this distance, x. So these two distances, x plus 12 minus x, add up to give 12. Now we could look at the tan of this angle here, tan of 27.9 degrees. That's equal to the side opposite 27.9, which is r, divided by the side adjacent to 27.9, which is x. Of course, there's two unknowns here. We don't have enough information to find r. All we know about this triangle is the angles in it. We don't, we don't have a side. It's not enough to have three angles. We need a, one side. But what, what we can then do is look to this triangle here and consider this angle here. Well, first of all, we have to get this angle. That means getting this angle here. Um, so I'm going to call this angle A. That means the side opposite angle A is little a, which is 8. And um, we have another side, we, we have another pair, a side and a corresponding angle. So we can say that A8 over sine A equals 10 divided by the sine of 55.75. So this is like A over sine A equals B over sine B, although th this is not labeled B, but it doesn't matter. You can change it to B if you like, then this becomes capital B and this becomes little c. It doesn't matter. We just need corresponding pair and, and corresponding side and angles. The only thing that's missing here is angle A. So we could solve this to find angle A. We just cross multiply and rearrange. If we do that, we get 10 sine A equals 8 times sine of 55.75. Or sine A equals 8 sine 55.75 divided by 10. So we get sine A equals 0.6613 or A equals 41.4 degrees. That means that this angle in here is half of 41.4 degrees. That is 20.7 degrees. Now if we look at the tan of 20.7 degrees, we have the side opposite 20.7 which is R divided by the side adjacent to it, which is 12 minus x. Now see here, we have two equations in two unknowns, so we can solve between them to find out what r is. We can rearrange this top equation to make x the subject. So basically we just interchange these two. x multiplied by tan 27.9 equals r, or x equal r, um, x equals r divided by the tan of 27.9. The tan of 27.9 is 0.529. 1 divided by 0.529 is 1.89. So we can write x as 1.89r, and then we can plug it into the second equation. Plug this in for x. So we get tan of 20.7 equals r divided by 12 minus 1.89r. And then we can just cross multiply. So we just have to solve this equation for r. So cross multiplying leads to this, and I've written it out over here, and I got a value of r equals 2.64. Now a much easier way to get that value would be to do the following. What we should do is look at the big triangle and divide it into these three green triangles and get the areas of the three green triangles and equate it to the area of the overall triangle. So here we have it. The area of this green triangle here is half the base, the base is 12, times the perpendicular height, which is r, plus the area of this triangle here, which is half the base, half times a times the perpendicular height, which is also r, plus the area of this triangle here, which is half the base, which is 10, times the perpendicular height, which is r. And the, three triangle, the areas of the three triangles must equal the area of the big triangle, which is 39.68. And we just solve this for r. Solving this equation leads to a value of r of 2.645, which is pretty close to this value here.